This is Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show, and I've got someone else on. His name is Jason, not with the hockey mask. His last name is Fair. I hope that's his real name. Yep. How you doing, Jason? I'm doing fabulous. How are you doing? That's your real name, Fair? Well, it's legit, man. Fair. I love it. That's how I treat all my clients and my family and friends. You got to be fair. <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I knew we were going to be talking about video. That's one of my things is video is the fastest way to accelerate that no like, trust, and respect factor. So we find yeah. out that you're a fair person. Yep. And I'm assuming that that's a real legitimate background and not a green screen. It is. It's legit. It's my backyard. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, woke up this morning. It's about 77 degrees, which is awesome for August here. And just, you know, absorbing some of this until it gets to be 90 here in about 20 minutes. So it's all oh, good. I got a guest. And that's my, that's my running buddy, Kai. See? He's a Vishla. Yeah, he's having fun out here with me this morning. I love that when that happens too, because it shows that you're authentic and genuine. And that's the way, I mean, you notice that the, the newscasters, they always had that facade. And then yeah. with the COVID stuff, they had to broadcast from home. home. And in my opinion, it seems so much more authentic and genuine. Right. And I right. just like And that. that was not planned whatsoever. That We didn't like yeah. coordinate that that's this morning puppet. after a run. It just was all natural. So That was a puppet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's deep fake stuff, isn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> So how long have you been in Arizona? Uh, 13 years now. Uh, originally, wow. originally grew up in Kansas City, moved to the West Coast to San Diego for about 13 years. Now I've been in Phoenix for about 13 years and absolutely love it here. It's great. There Can't must be. be something going on there because I just hired a coach. He's from, I think, Tempe. Okay. And uh, yeah. I got a friend out there from Flagstaff. I've never been there. My nephew lived there. I've never been to Arizona. I've been really close, but I haven't been there. Yeah. But it's, I've been getting a lot of interviews and stuff from the Arizona, so you must be doing something out there. Maybe it's that time zone change. You guys don't play that game, right? We don't play. Yeah, daylight savings time is not in our game. But, you know, in the summertime when it's 100 degrees outside, I mean, I think the biggest thing you do is you're just staying inside, except for this morning because it is such a great morning out here, which is great. Take advantage of it. So you're married and got kids. You're wild and crazy. You're single, wild and crazy. That's the oh no, I've got two boys, and they just started school on Tuesday, and uh, they that's why I ended up having to get higher upgraded for my internet because they're crushing Zoom calls with their <laughs> teachers all day long, which is all good. And then my wife's a biology high school teacher, so she's working from home uh, as well on the internet. So, but it's all good. You know, that's a good segue into our topic because I got a feeling that um, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs. I just saw someone, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, was talking about the Mall of America. They're a couple months behind in rent. Oh, you know wow. Their rent is, it's That'd in the crazy. billions a month. Oh, my. Wow. <laughs> wow. But they can't pay it because the stores aren't open and people aren't in there working. I'm thinking that we, we can't you know, continually supplement people's um, incomes through the government. That just doesn't mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. So people are going to have to figure out how to work. And if they're not going to be able to comfortably work, you know, like restaurants, they're having to spread everybody out six feet when they used to spread everybody six inches. Right. So right. a lot of people are going to start working from home. And I believe starting their own businesses. And I encourage them to do this video stuff. And that's Absolutely. what you guys do. You teach people how to do video. And um, yeah. I was reading some of the, the things on the, program you represent in your LinkedIn bio that you actually do like lead generation through the, the video and uh, you can kind of track all that. Is yeah. That yeah, absolutely. We're a hybrid digital marketing agency and we're hybrid because we only not, not only are we working with a marketing team, a lot of the times we're also working with a sales team, right? And when cool. you're talking about lead gen, right, that typically starts with the sales process. And so when we're working with clients, we're not only helping map out the customer journey, on the marketing side, we're working with the sales team on how they can leverage the power of video to help not only speed up the sales process and help communicate because people are four times more likely to watch a video than read text. And so we're educating our clients and understanding how they can leverage a variety of different types of videos. And one of those in particular is what we call kind of perishable videos. We've been training on this for years, right? Way before the pandemic hit. And it's about how you can leverage the power of your smartphone and create these personalized videos, these one-on-one -on -one videos. And now that uh, most people don't have access to their customers, 
and no, it's across. Me. When you say perishable videos, is, that, is yeah. that sort of like the opposite of evergreen videos where it's like a current situation, you better get on it now? Bingo, bingo. Very and cool, very cool. Yeah, there's a big myth out there that people think it has to be perfectly polished. You can't say ums, you, you know, you, you can't use your phone. It's, you gotta have all these lights and it's gotta be like Hollywood production. And nope. that's definitely not the case. You know, you wanna use your phone and there's some tricks to it, right? But as long as you've got some of these tips that we've been training clients for a long time now, you can help build that rapport, that relationship, uh, build that trust, totally. right? Since you can't get in front of your customers. A lot of barriers nowadays. You can't pick up the phone even nowadays, right? Nobody's sitting at their desk. Well, you know, what? I, home. I was uh, talking with, a, I was on another stream and there was a guy bragging about, because uh, he's going to be doing calls. He was doing hundreds of calls. And I thought, I'm, I've been trying to get him into doing this video thing, and that's what generate leads, kind of like an infomercial. Yeah. And I was going to yeah. mention um, that the, the whole trust factor of the, uh, the the naturalness of being on video and using your yep. phone. Do you know the right. name Joe Sugarman? No. Okay. You're a younger generation. I'm 63, but there used to be these things, blue blocker sunglasses. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard of the blue and blockers. He yep. was the man on the street. He would just go out there with look like a random camera and go, hey, have you seen these? And there was people interacting in real time, in real life. It wasn't edited and actors and stuff. It was real, genuine, authentic, sincere okay. people. Yeah, right. Well, again, nowadays, when you can't get in front of your customers, how are you going to build that rapport? And a big part of it is being natural on camera. So, you know, we don't want you to develop these, you know, highly produced, fully scripted videos. We, you know, we educate clients to say, hey, you got to be you, but you got to be a part of your sales process. And not only is it like that human to human, that one-to-one -one connection, but also how you can leverage the power of video for your proposals. Because we know decisions aren't made in silos, right? Typically it's a group decision. So how you can record a video screen of your you know, proposal, you're on there explaining it, your champion inside the organization isn't gonna be as energetic, isn't gonna be as knowledgeable about what you're selling. So if you could create a five, even 10 minute video proposal, send that off to your prospect. And then the beautiful thing about technology nowadays, you can track on the back end to see who's actually watching it. And so now the sales world has changed from you know, picking up the phone to try to get somebody on there from a cold call perspective to creating these assets that use technology to see how they're engaging with it. And you know, it's, it's a whole new world nowadays. Do you mean like, say example, you've got a big proposal you're sending to a big corporation and they're gonna get yeah. it on the boardroom table, but they're probably not gonna be on the boardroom table because the CEO's in Singapore or something. It can track it that way. So you know that halfway through the video, the CEO left, you could tell. Yeah, you can get notifications. There's a couple different platforms out there that we typically recommend for clients. Vidyard's one, Wisti is another one. I'm happy to send you those links after this call. But yeah, absolutely. You can get notifications, instant notifications on your phone to know who's crushing your content. And you know that way you can follow up. We do this all the time. We get these notifications even on our watches to say, hey, somebody's crushing your video content right now. Well, what are you going to do? Right? You're going to follow up and say, hey, how was that proposal? How'd the meeting go? Sure. What can we do? And that's the world we live in today. And so we're training you know, everything from startups to you know, billion dollar companies and how they can use this technology to help speed up the sales process. Because again, it's not only speeding up the sales process, but it's understanding who's engaging with the content and whether it's a video proposal or an intro video, you know who's crushing your content. And from a Legion perspective, right? Who are you gonna follow up with? <laughs> right. How far are they along the sales process? Yeah, exactly. And what content are they watching? So when you follow up with them, you have context to know, hey, it looks like Jimmy watched our explainer video or Jimmy watched that case study. I can go into a little bit deeper dive when I call Jimmy to say, hey, Jimmy, let's talk about that case study. What questions do you have? And it's a beautiful world now to understand that information. Well, that's what I like what you're talking about. You're talking about the simplification of the video. So people don't think, oh my God, I got to have this produced and I need cameras and lights right. and I got to hire people to do all this stuff. So the simplification of it. And then you said the hybrid that goes in with the lead generation, because without the leads, all you are is just another YouTube someone's watching. Right. And, um, I use an analogy sometimes, like if you say you're, you're uh, the owner of a steakhouse and you're doing your videos and you're getting all these views, but those views happen to be vegans and vegetarians. 
right? It ain't gonna work. Yeah, so you gotta make easy. sure who you're connecting with. And then when you get that alignment together, it's kind of like opening up a combination lock. If you don't know the combination, it's really hard to open. If you do, it's really easy. So you right. get that alignment and it sounds like that's the kind of hybrid platform you've put together is the, the no like and trust factor is there. And then yep. you can look the, at the actual interest level of the person and find out when are they ready to pull the trigger. Absolutely. And the beautiful thing about video, it's engaging. And people have just been, ever since COVID and before this, everybody's inbox is jammed. Everybody's getting these emails. And if you can stand out, yeah. be unique, and have a, just even in the subject line, say video, your open rate's going to increase by like 200%. And people want to see this authenticity, but they also want to see you as a person. Every, you, know, you, you get those emails all the time. It's like those marketing emails. You see these and you're like, it's a marketing email. I right? go through mine like this. Right, exactly. Until I see the one that I want to look at. Yeah, and just that's absolutely. And the platforms that we work with, they do some pretty cool things where you can do like an animated GIF. And so you can see the video play button in the middle of your email. You've got this animated GIF and it stands out. You're like, well, what's that? You click on it. Now they've got the video. And now you can actually you know, engage them a little bit more. There's a you know, book meeting. So if somebody wants to you know, book a meeting with you, you can put that on the page as well. So it's just a great way to interact and help with your legion. And we're typically recommending clients not only in the beginning, um, but also throughout your sales process. So it's one thing to do the lead gen, but it's also how we're following up with clients. And it doesn't even need to be on a platform. You could simply, you know, if you have engaged in a client, you record something, and then you can also just text it to them, right? And just create that human connection. It doesn't have to be on a platform. It can just be simply as a, a text. You know, I haven't spoke to this client in uh, whatever, four or five months. Let me reach out to them, send them a personalized email or text, and then just see how they're doing. It doesn't have to be even about business related. And it's just right. part of my relationship development where, again, if you can't get in there, you can't talk to them, right? You can't meet them face to face with uh, what's going on with the pandemic. How can you still build that relationship? And obviously, video is a huge part of that. Uh, this is my, you know, I got this entrepreneurial brain and I'm a Gemini. So I got something going on over here and something going on over here. So yeah. my brain is creating and thinking about ideas. Yeah. I, like, I really like what you're talking about where the video is one thing, but they can leave and they can go off and they're hitting TikTok or they're on Facebook or something. Right. You're interacting that. And I kind of look at it almost like a, those infomercials, but wait, there's more. Right. Do that kind of format, only not so corny and, and pushy. But right. you say, as you're talking, if you're interested in this, I'm doing it. It's going to be on sale for the next week and go to this domain. You can, you can right. say that stuff in the video or have a, a domain that goes to a, if you're interested, click here. And then it goes into that text or that email. So you got that engagement and you, what's, What's really cool, what, you're, what it sounds like what you're talking about is you can kind of track where they are in the sales cycle, like I said. Because so many times, I mean, even the softwares, like I use Kartra and things like Click Page, Click, uh, Click Funnels and that. Yep. They've got this thing that's an abandoned cart tag. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't see that at the grocery store. They get in line, <laughs> they go through. They don't go all sudden, okay, I changed my mind and leave. Right. That happens on the internet. So if okay. you can get people in that line, they're going to make that sale because you've, you know, you created that trust factor. You're being fair. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And there's different phases of video content. I know I talked a bit about the perishable style where it's just that, you know, introduction, you're introducing yourself and where you're at maybe in the sales process, but you can also take it a notch up and start talking about customer pain points. And really when you start reaching out to them, you're addressing their specific pain points through video and you have solutions and they don't have to be long videos, right? It could be 60, 90 seconds up to two minutes, but you're talking about industry things that are happening and you're becoming a thought leadership in your industry. And so that's the progression, right? It's, hey, how we can do the introductions with those perishable videos, but then, hey, let's take it up a notch and start talking about industry trends, industry things that are happening and then help develop that better relationship and then you can start emailing them because you know nowadays the customer's in control of their destiny, right? When it comes to yeah, purchasing your product totally. or service. So we have to spoon feed them, right? Information and be helpful. Helpful is a new viral, right? So as long as you can be helpful and provide this, you know, high level topical information about their industry, 
then you start developing this thought leadership. So you go from, you know, introduction, right, to, you know, moving them on to, hey, this person's talking about our industry, this person's, you know, providing valuable information. And that's when you can do it on video, which takes it up another level. So we're also training clients to, you know, work with their sales team to help them not only do these introductions, but how do you take it to that next level to get deeper and then start setting up like email sequences. So you're spoon feeding them information, right? And being helpful, but you're not talking about your product, right? That's like, like later down in the journey, you got to build that trust. You got to, you got to date right. somebody for a while, right? And yep, then I use that analogy that, too. Yep. So once you start that trust value, then you can start talking about your product, but you need to build that value. You need to build that thought leadership. You know, up. The, the mind's racing again, and I've never been to Arizona, but I just had an idea because my background's in the event industry. I started okay. doing magic, like see yep. my little magic lounge sign right there. The magic yeah. <laughs> I started doing magic when I was a little kid. That got me in the event business. And I started okay. using events to market products and services. Like I, I produced this big trade show for event planners to come to find all their resources like caterers, balloon decorators, staging, lighting. And there was okay. one magician there and that's where I generate all my leads. You see? Nice. Yeah, so we used I to go this, to events all the time too. I do the similar kind of thing, or did before pre-COVID, yeah. is we would uh, find like a, a real estate uh, uh, agent that wanted to meet first-time home buyers. So we would do a cruise for people interested in first-time home buying, and they'd come out on the boat, have brunch, just casual. You know, you're on the boat for two, three hours with this real estate agent, uh -huh. developing a relationship. relationship. Yep. We would do things like go to Top Golf and we just drive some balls and just get related yep. to each other. So yep. what I'm getting at is when the COVID thing happened, I had to pivot and I went 100% online. So I'm doing affiliate marketing now and doing video to, to attract those people. Beautiful. And I was wondering if maybe there's something that you guys and myself could work out as far as the lead generation of it. Because what I was doing, I had a pretty cool system set up where I would do uh, small meetups that were relevant to how to use Facebook for the event planner. You know, how mm. do you use LinkedIn for the event planner? How do you yep. use Pinterest for the event planner? I do these physical meetups yep. and then locals here, people would register. Uh, would, the way I did it, I advertised on Facebook to a 50 mile radius of event planners. I would drive them to an Eventbrite page that had that meetup coming. They would mm -hmm. opt into that. That would go into a MailChimp sequence and it would automatically mail them about my event coming off in March. Boom. Yeah. So it, so there might be a, something we could do in the event world because the event industry is huge. It got hit. They're hurting right now. And yeah. there's all these restaurants and country clubs and cr river cruises and lake Convention cruises. centers that are empty. Oh, crazy. Yeah, that, that impacted a lot. Yeah, I was just going to say, we were on the conference circuit too. We'd go to conferences every single month and all those have pivoted towards virtual. And uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're moving and shaking. We've pivoted too. And we're pre-recording a lot of our clients, you know, key opinion leaders, CEOs, chief marketing officers and getting them on camera because they're busy. And a lot of times they don't want to be live, right? <laughs> and uh, there's challenges with live. And uh, some of the industries where you need to have legal regulatory uh, we're filming a lot of pre-record things uh, right now, but yeah, I mean, the event industry just got well, blown up. Right? That's where you or, have your, your uh, field staff out there doing selfies and they're just supposed to do, you know, good stuff with good language and all that. And they can just be out and they're kind of like uh, roving reporters and they drive people into the way the top of the funnel and eventually they get into the pipeline. That's when the CEO gets on and does the live thing. Right. But, exactly. Um, Exactly. I don't want to do this too long because then it consumes everybody's day. So sure. I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. But we, could, we should talk more because I have... Yeah, absolutely. The, the event industry is huge because there's... When, so, like when the convention center closes, there's no more catering, no more tents, no more right. linens. There's no more food and beverage. Right. There's no entertainment. The snowball effect rolls down from everything, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And the, right. that's a whole industry that I think could use this this concept to help them start get, cause it's starting to open up now and they, mm -hmm. they need the help to get that ball rolling again. Absolutely. So, totally agree. Before I sign this off, is there any way you can uh, let us know, is there like a trial or how they can contact you to get like a evaluation call or something with you? Yeah. You I mean the, the biggest thing right now, we're doing a lot of remote sales training and we've got about 20 minutes worth of free video that you can crush and 
your audience can crush. So if they go to wirebuzz.com forward slash remote dash sales, and I can send that link to you as well, but it's wirebuzz.com forward slash remote dash sales. And you can get up to speed in these remote selling techniques that we've been training way before the pandemic hit. And it's a lot of helpful content for you there. Well, I will put that in the YouTube description and then I'll beam this thing out and I'll send you the link. If you could also go on there and help propagate it out to the right people. Oh, absolutely. That's Happy how it to works. Do so. One plus one equals 11. Right. We're marketers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Leverage. I love that word hybrid. I use it a lot because I even yeah. drive a hybrid, a Toyota hybrid. Oh, beautiful. There we go. It's right <laughs> in your wheelhouse. Exactly. Well, Jason, well, I appreciate you being fair with us. <laughs> absolutely. Well, thanks for having me on. And this has been fun and look forward to continuing the conversation. Perfecto. Thank you. Awesome. Enjoy the day. Don't burn up. Exactly. Peace. See ya. <laughs>